All right, here we go. All right, we're on recording. All right, good evening, everybody. As I said this afternoon, Big Boy Sports has something special coming for y'all today. And let me tell you, this man here, he, he, he's one of these guys I've been looking up for, you know, the past 24 hours or so, and he's got a quite impressive resume. And I'm joined tonight by Dre Sherrill. He is the strength and conditioning coach of the Duel of Horror Monsters. And, man, how are you doing tonight? Because Phenomenal, man. It's a great night. Phenomenal. I can't complain. Glad you glad you reached out. Glad you have me on here. I hope I hopefully I give the crowd or the, the audience something special and something they can take from me. You know, and just 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 glad to, for the opportunity. Yeah, uh, yeah. I really wanted to first ask you, how did you get involved with the Harbor Monsters? Like, was this like a? So I, uh, I've been uh, training here in Duluth for about six, seven years now, and you know, just slowly making a name for myself, slowly pushing out as many guys as I can, helping out in the community best I can, and it just kind of became my passion. And Tony O'Neill and Junior Gregory. I've helped those guys over the years with some of their 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 players. I helped Junior out with both of his sons, and then a couple of kids uh, Tony sent over to me. And I, I guess it just was a, a, a how can I say it? Just was a, a special moment because the, both guys knew what I I was able to do. Both of both of the guys know what I'm capable of, and I, I guess they felt like this is a chance and opportunity to kind of show the community as a whole what I'm truly capable of and why they say I'm the the best sports trainer within the 120 mile radius up north so i'm looking forward to it kind of glad they reached out to me and, and at the same time kind of humbled at the same time that they reached out to me so i plan on doing some things plan on helping these guys these young men per se be in the best shape of their lives and just pretty much showcase what i'm truly capable of gotcha um so you said you've been in um strength and conditioning stuff like that for about six seven years like i what made you want to do that in the first place? So uh, when I hung up my cleats back in 2016 after a devastating knee injury, I kind of rehabbed myself back to health. And uh, it was kind of how my company, I Can, I Will, came about. You know, just felt like if I was going to get over the injury and, and kind of bounce back, I just felt like I had to have the mindset that I can and I will get over this. And so in the process of doing so, I, I kind of got to the point like, all right, if I can get myself to this point, what else can I do? And eventually I ended up running to the likes of Aaron Olsen and Derek Daniels, two, two guys that I'm truly grateful and truly proud to call family and my brothers and everything. And they gave me the chance to kind of train them. And then from there, I went to Grace Kirk. From Grace Kirk, went to Layla Monroe. From Layla Monroe, went to Ada Scaff. And just the numbers kept growing. Connery Weeks, Austin Overdahl, and... The numbers just kept growing, man. And just recently, I had a guy, David Lunch from Big Dave. He signed up here to University of Minnesota, Duluth. And so just, just guys like that, just families like that in general, just giving me a chance to showcase what I can do and showcase what I'm capable of. Over the years, the numbers just kept growing, and more and more people saw what I was capable of doing. They gave me a chance to do so. And so that's kind of how I got into the scene. And the past six, seven years has just been truly phenomenal, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, this has been some great stuff. Um, now, is 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 this your facility? And yeah, I, I, I already, I already don't forgot because we were talking <laughs> so like the, minutes before. A lot of people, uh, so a lot of people say it's mine, but it's not mine yet. It's the the owner, Bert Eggington and Ryan Cool, two guys that I'm truly grateful that God allowed me to cross their path. They're the the actual owners. They just gave me the grace. To train from out of here, but hopefully one day we'll either partner up or I can take over the likes and own them myself once they decide to retire. Are you a native of Duluth, by the way? I'm originally from Miami, Florida. I uh, came up here to Rainy River Community College up there in International Falls, kind of three hours north of where I'm at now. I went there, stayed there for about three years, played football, basketball, transferred down to North Carolina A&T State. Shout out my Aggies. North Carolina Anti State. I came back here, transferred to the Duluth University of Minnesota Duluth. Shout out my Bulldogs. Went there 2008, 2010, won two national championships. Then from there, I uh, 
did the whole chase the NFL dream, even though it wasn't a dream. I just wanted to see what I was truly capable of. Came close. I uh, I have a, a background of actually playing in arena football. I played for the Green Bay Blizzard in Colorado Ice. And then oh, really? just kind of went from there pretty much. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Miami boy. I'm Dade County, born and raised Miami, Florida. Gosh, how long did you play with the Blizzard? I was with the Blizzard back in February of 2014, so 10 years ago. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah, 10 years. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's definitely a long time. That was way before I came back into the scene of you know the arena game. And you said you played with Colorado. Um, it was either the Crush or the Ice or something like that. I, I, I they're now called Colorado Ice, but I think back then when I played for them, they were Colorado Crush. Yeah. Over in Fort Collins, Colorado, that's a beautiful city, man. I've got to go visit. <laughs> I've really got to go. I really got to do more traveling, to be completely yeah. honest with you. So I'm, a uh, city. So I'm a city boy. Colorado, Fort Collins, Colorado. It it has a special place in my heart. That was probably by far the most beautiful city I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. I, I know some people down in Colorado. Um, I know some friends, small friends of mine that are down in Colorado now. And it's just they say it's beautiful. So now I'm like, yeah. I, I got, I really got to go down. It's Colorado. <laughs> yeah, go visit them, man. They're not lying. If you get a chance, go visit them. Um, what has been the best part about being a strength and conditioning coach? What What has been the best part about it so far? Ooh, I would say I would say more uh, more so the lives that I've touched. Even though I'm I'm training these young men, young women to be better athletes, I think just simply touching their lives in the aspect where they're growing mentally just as much as if they're they're growing physically. Just being a a a a person that's not from the same background as them, some of them not the same color, some of them being the first black guy they've ever interacted with truly. <clears throat> just simply being able to touch their lives from a different aspect and just show them what I've been through, how I've overcame it, and why there's so much peace that comes from me. A lot of people say that I have a calming soul. And so when they say that and they ask me, well, Dre, how did you get that? I kind of explain to them what I've been through, what I've dealt with, and why I'm the way I am, per se. So I would say, yeah, definitely touching the lives that I've touched. And I've, I've touched so many that it's it's countless. I can go on for days of how many people I've touched from the, from the Derek Danes, the Cam Olafrons, the Tristan Lattimore. It's, it's so many kids that I've touched, man, that I've count, I've lost count, but I'm forever grateful that I've been able to actually touch their lives. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, what What's like the most, what do you, what do you think is like going to be the most exciting part about this upcoming season? You know, y'all start May 25th, actually, you know. Yep. Um, I, I was I would say the talent we're bringing in, just going to the second trial and seeing all the talent they brought in, and then watching some of the guys they're signing, some of the guys they're bringing in. I think it's just going to be tre like tremendous off the off the chart talent, off the chart off the chart. Excuse me, off the chart talent, off the chart speed, off the chart football IQ. Some of the guys they're signing, I'm just like, man, I wish I was ten years younger so I can actually play with some of these guys. And then seeing some of the vets that they're signing as well, just seeing some of the guys still sticking around, still hanging around, still able to lace them up and still do what they do. It's just, it's going to be awesome, man. Like I have, I can't really be putting it into words because I'm so excited. For one, I'm excited to train these guys and get them in the best shape of their lives. But at the same time, I'm excited to watch them perform. And I think a lot of people are going to be in for a, a surprise to see how talented and actually good the Luth Harbor Monsters really are. Gotcha. Um, are there any other notable people that you've helped, you know, move up, maybe grow, maybe move up to higher leagues or anything like that, or any like colleges or anything like that? So, I mean, college wise, so uh, I've had the chance to to train an All American, a college All American, and Aaron Olson. I've had a chance to train the. All-American high school kid and Derek Daniels. I've had the chance to train my guy, Tommy Kimball. 
Shout out Tommy Kimball, first guy that I actually had a chance to train on who uh, actually earned a walk-on spot at a D1 level. Uh, who else? Shout out my guy, Javante Gregory, who uh, actually ended up going, right now he's at Winona State, full scholarship, to play Division II football. I'm, uh, I got another guy now, uh, Carter Kilroy, who we're working on trying to get him another D2 scholarship. Then uh, I have two guys now, Tyrese and Tyree Gibson, who are working on their pro days to try and chase their NFL dreams. And I pray God gets them there because they're truly two humble young men and two great souls and great individuals. I have a soccer guy in Finnegan Huffington who just signed to a major soccer league not too long ago. And I have another guy named Malcolm. I'm, I'm not going to even try and slaughter his last name, but I, I call him Mally, but he's on the verge of getting ready to sign a soccer contract as well. So I got a couple of guys who, uh, who are working behind the scenes and not really saying much, but they're doing it all to try and actually chase their dreams and allow me to be a part of it. Gotcha. Yeah. I hope these guys get, you know, whatever they're, whatever they're hoping to achieve because that, that that's that's the ultimate goal in all this is to help guys you know get to the next level that's the ultimate goal um to enjoy the process to trust god lean on it lean on their faith and just just enjoy the journey man you never know when it'll be over you never know how far it can go but most importantly just enjoy every step absolutely um do you have anything else that you want to say you know about yourself or anything a lot of people tell me I'm too humble and that I should toot my horn a little more, but I've been through I've been through a lot in life. God is truly amazing. I'm not here to preach to the choir or try and convince nobody why they should believe in God, but I'm a walking testament of what he can and what he will do. I've been through hell and back. I'm still here with a beautiful smile, beautiful energy, and always here willing to help every kid that I can. I never turn the kid away. The only way a kid will stop working with me is if he stopped. I truly believe my calling is, is to help children, help kids, help individuals in life, period. And I think my calling, <clears throat> excuse me, my calling is through my training. And a lot of my, I wish I had one on, but on a lot of my training, clothing, uh, apparel, I have faith. It's the number one thing, it's the number one rule that I live by faith because I know no matter what, my faith is going to get me through whatever I'm going through. And I truly believe my training is a testament of that. And I use my training to just simply show people how real God is, how true God is, how he'll never leave you nor for safety. Or excuse me, never leave you nor for safety. And I pray someday that I continue to do that. And I pray someday when God finally calls me home, he'll tell me, job well done. Gotcha. Um, you see, you still see yourself like doing strength and conditioning and training like I don't know, the next two, five years, maybe you still yeah. see, do you still yeah. think that's your calling? Oh yeah. It's definitely my calling. Plus I got to keep it going because my daughter told me I better take care of her company. So <laughs> <laughs> right. I got to keep it going. So once she goes off to college in the next six, seven years and she comes back and she decides she wants to take over, I got something for her to take over. Hey, that, that, that's honestly great right there, man. That's great, man. For real, like, like, like if somebody was going to hand me, you know, like the keys to a business or something like that, you know, like family handed me the keys to the business, man, I would be so, I would be so happy, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> to be completely I, honest with you. I got to break those generational curses and I got to leave my children something. So when I do check out, I know they're well taken care of. Yep. Best you can. That's the best you can do. That's the best you can do. Best way to leave them. You know, leave them off at a better place than you would ever be. Agree. Man, I want to thank you so much for joining me tonight. I know, you know, <laughs> um, I know we, we got it, it actually got it actually got a little weird for me <laughs> because of you know it was storming down here, so well, y'all, you know, my, my internet was knocked out for like about. I don't know how long, but I got home at like 5.40, 5.45, you know, because I substitute teach. I, 
I don't know if anybody knows. Well, everybody should know this by now, but you don't know that. But now you do. But yeah, I substitute teach and everything like that. So I get home 545 drenched in the rain and everything like that. I bought a cheap umbrella <laughs> and I thought my internet was not going to be able to, you know, get it together. But I'm glad it got itself together. I mean, yeah, just another miracle. <laughs> just another yeah. miracle in my life to get this thing together. And I'm glad you, you, were able to take some time out of your night to talk to me because I mean I did not expect this. I I didn't even expect Steve to you know reach it back out because uh y'all were like the uh the tenth or eleventh team that I've contacted in the past two yeah, or three out. weeks. <laughs> so shout out Steve we got a great GM. I think we might have the best in the league. That guy's phenomenal man. I got nothing but the utmost respect for Steve. That guy is phenomenal I tell you he is truly phenomenal. Yeah, oh, yes, he is. Yes, and that, that phone call I had with him was great. So, you know, everything got set up smoothly and everything like that. So everything went off without a hitch for the most part. You know, um, again, Dre, I want to thank you so much for coming on to the show. Um, I'll be sure to, you know, you know, upload this at some point it, during the night before it starts raining again. But, uh, man, I. Again, thank you so much. Um, I hope you have a good rest of your night. I'm ready for the 2024 season for Duluth and all the other TAL teams. I hope you are too. Um, yes, sir. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, I'm going to stop this recording and get it on up for those of you at home. Make sure you come on down. And you know, you know, grab a grab a late night snack or something like that, you know, and and spend what 16, 17, 18 minutes with us, you know, just listen to the vibes, listen to a good conversation, everything like that. And I will see you all on yeah, well, actually tomorrow, NHL trade deadline. Cause are you an NHL guy or are you like a, a sports guy or at all? I'm 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 still I'm still slowly trying to trying to tap over to the NHL world. <laughs> Matter of fact, shout out my little guy uh, Noah Wise. Him and his state is actually him and his team, excuse me, are actually playing down in the state championship, mm. trying to bring home a state championship for hockey. So high school hockey, yeah, Hermitown High School, go Hawks! Oh wow, that's nice. So yeah, wait. Go, go Duluth, these Greyhounds, go Denfield, Hunters as well. I can't, I can't leave them out because then they're going to try and say I'm being biased and I'm only trying to love one. So much respect to all of them. Man, that, that. <laughs> Man, I don't even know what to say at this point. <laughs> I mean, you you got to show the love. I mean, that that's what that's it is. You got to show the love. That's me. I try and show love to everybody. I have no ill, no negative, no hatred, no nothing, man. I'm just a ball of, a ball of energy that's just positive, upbeat, and content, man. This is just me. I'm just happy in who I am, happy in my being. So I got to show love to everybody. That's all I know. Gotcha. So um, for me and for Dre, uh, we're both going to head on about. And again, I'll see y'all all throughout the weekend. Um, again, note that the team will start up on May the 25th. And Dre, do you have like any other socials or anything as well? well I do want to ask about that. So if you want to follow me on Facebook, Dre Sherrill, D-R-E space S-H-E-R-I-L-L, -L, or you can follow me on Instagram, D-R-E-D-A-Y, underscore I C I W T. Come on and help me get my followers up and y'all can see what I'm taking care of, what I'm doing. See all this positive energy I got flowing in my gym. Gotcha. Thank you so much, Dre. Um, I'm going to let you get on up out of here, you know, so you get back to what you were doing because I believe you were like training guys for, you know, <laughs> before yeah. you even came on. It's, 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 a, it's a non-stop process. Again, man, I appreciate you for having me, man. God bless you. Have a good night. You too, man. All right, take care.
All right. Okay. So yeah, that'll that'll do it from us. Um, we move the stage. Okay, yeah, that'll do it from us here again. Um, you know, NHL talk timing coming tomorrow in the morning some time. Um, and this weekend indoor football again will debut this weekend instead of next weekend so just in case people um you know aren't you know people aren't, aren't getting confused and everything this weekend indoor football will debut this weekend it will be before colorado's first non-league home game because we got to talk about what in the hell the nal schedule is i know i know jim and them are going to talk what the nal schedule is but i need to say some words too because you know you know how i am you know how i feel about nine conference um, non-league games in leagues. So uh, um, again, there there was some information in here that I need to talk about that has been given to me by Steve Walters, the GM of the Duel of Harvard Monsters. Again, that first game will be May 25th, and it will be against the Dallas Falcons of the AAL2. I don't know how the Dallas Falcons are coming up to Duel of, but they are. And the other thing is, is that the TAL playoffs will be the last, the TL championship game, or whatever they're going to call it, will be the last indoor arena game to be played. It will be the last game to be played. It will be August the 17th. It'll be the weekend of August the 17th. Playoffs will start August the 10th. And that information was given to me by Steve Walters himself. So um, I knew. I think we all knew that there was going to be a game on May the 25th, but we didn't know the opponent. Now we do. So, um, uh, Again, I want to thank Dre for coming on. You know, and we spent like five minutes like trying to get, you know, get him off, <laughs> get him off the street because I didn't want to. I didn't want to take up too much of his time. So you know, he's a great guy. I'm gonna definitely try and see Dukon or like uh, anybody else want to talk to him or anything like that. I'll see about what what Dukon, maybe Sam Shady too. Uh, see if they want to talk to any other guys because they, they actually I have all I have three of Dulos, um coaches their their contact info so they may you know want to do an interview later on down the line and everything like that as well so that's another thing that could happen there will be one more interview this month and that will be um, the weekend of the sixteenth again I like to set up my stuff in advance so. So the weekend of the 16th, um, I'm just letting you guys know now, there will be an interview that day. It will be in the morning. It will not be in the evening. It will be in the morning. So just wait on that again. For now, for right now, this weekend indoor football will debut after the Pac-12 championship, the women's Pac-12 championship. NHL video will be tomorrow in the morning. So I can really kind of digest some things, you know, because the trade let the line is tomorrow, you know, and everything like that. So again, big boy signing out. I wanted to get that information out to you all just so that it's something that you all know now. So stick around, keep the keep the brand growing. Um, I will share this to do the social medias and everything like that and my own. So Big Boy signing out for real this time. For real. I'm signing out for real this time. Y'all have a great night. And I will see you all in a little over 12 hours or so. So, good night.